Um, uh, and uh, thank you, uh, every single one of you, for being here. And this class is going to be on the subject of the kingdom of God. Uh, and uh, for the study of the subject, we will use two textbooks. Uh, and these are All People's Church publications, one by the name of Kingdom of God. The other one uh, is Kingdom Builders. And I think uh, uh, this is already this is already available for the Google Meet uh, students. It is posted on your classwork page. So even right now, if you want to download it, as I uh, uh, you know share, uh, you you can look at it. Right. So I will try and go in order. So then, as you look at it and as I share, uh, it will be like a, uh, you know like a double intake of the same same subject. So you can download it and follow along. Uh, and similarly with the e-learning students, it's available for you on the in the course. So textbook section, you can download it and follow along. So yeah, the kingdom of God. Um, this is, uh, has anyone heard of this term, the kingdom of God being used in your church or, you know, uh, your Christian circle, kingdom of God. Yes, Christopher. Yes, I've heard of uh, I've heard of this uh, term, uh, Pastor. Okay. Okay. Uh, quite, quite often, uh, mm. particularly when it comes to um, uh, you know when when we talk about you know heaven, uh, we, we associate sometimes kingdom of God with with, with heaven. So yes. that's that's how I would uh, I would remember you know that term being used. Yeah. Yes. Yes. True. Yeah, so um, associated with God as the King of Heaven, uh, and this is a common common uh, phrase which is used um, uh, in Christian circles. Uh, thank you, thank you, Christopher, for sharing your understanding. Uh, anyone else have you heard this term, uh, Kingdom of God, and what does uh, what does it mean to you? Can I speak, madam? Yes, please. Yes, hope. Yeah, to yes. yeah, to me, kingdom of God, it means that uh, all that belongs to God, including me, mm. including all stuff which we are doing, like like here today, uh, learning word of God, mm. preaching, yes. evangelizing. All of that yes. is a uh, matter of the kingdom of God. That is what yes. I, I know. Yes. Yeah. Okay. Thank you. Thanks, uh, Hope, for sharing that. So, you know, we're all included. We're a part of the kingdom. And the things that we're doing, you know, it's, that was also in the kingdom, part of the kingdom. Uh, so, uh, I'm sure, you know, all of you, if I were to go um, over one by one and ask you, do you know what the kingdom of God is? Have you ever, ever heard of this term? You would say yes. Can you have a certain understanding? So we will um, expand on that understanding of the kingdom of God. Um, and we will also see how uh, understanding this subject, you know, uh, really uh, will impact our everyday lives. Okay, Abni says kingdom of God where God rules and reigns. Yes, that's that's right, Abni. Uh, so as we study the subject, you know, what, what is it that we can expect? Uh, it's... it's uh, a term which is used in scripture and uh, you find it a lot particularly in the gospels when you have uh, john the baptist talk about the kingdom of god you have the lord jesus mention this term the kingdom of god uh, and you know this uh, jesus also taught us to pray right he said uh, thy kingdom come on earth as it is in heaven and christopher just shared kingdom of god uh, in our minds it relates to heaven and who god is uh, in heaven so we have been taught to pray this thy kingdom come on earth as it is in heaven so when we pray this when we understand about the kingdom of god you know it will it will give us a perspective um, about god's nature god's position uh, well we do understand we we uh, see the revelation of god in different ways we will come to that a little later, but here is another revelation, right? God as king and uh, the, the creation, all of his creation as his kingdom. So 
uh, we will get that understanding of who God is as a king over everything that he has created, what his rule and reign looks like. You know, when we uh, talk about king, uh, for many, I, I don't know, like different countries that we are a part of, we might have governments uh, that are primarily democratic, but you know, some places you, you would have kingdom. Some, some countries do still have kingdoms, they have kings and queens. Uh, so you probably might, might uh, understand this faster uh, than the others here. Uh, but God's word reveals the rule and reign of God are similar to the way a king rules. Right? A king or a, or, a, or a queen, they rule over uh, their, their region whatever has been given to them, in other, other words, kingdom. Uh, so we will, we will see how God rules and reigns. And also, you know, as an extension of, of this understanding, we will realize, you know, what kind of a life uh, are we called to live? Because we are part of the kingdom. Okay, and, and uh, we will see that kingdom living, Kingdom living, uh, it, it has to do with uh, kingdom values, it has to do with kingdom culture, uh, there is a certain way of uh, kingdom thinking, right? All of this uh, is applicable because we are a part of this kingdom and a very, very uh, important part of this kingdom. So, uh, just to summarize, you know, I was saying that we will get a revelation of God as the ruler, as the king. And we will also get a revelation of the kind of dominion that God has over his creation. And thirdly, we will uh, see how this affects the life that we live as believers. And that is why you know, we, we want to build on this understanding. And this is a very scriptural thing to talk about. Uh, now, I, I'm not sure how many of us have heard sermons on this subject. There are plenty. There are plenty. But... Uh, you know, in general, we could say that this is not something that is um, common, okay? At least not, uh, I haven't heard too many uh, sermons on the kingdom of God as such. So it is scriptural, it is in the Bible, but, you know, we may not have heard uh, much about the kingdom of God and thereby, you know, we don't have uh, a, a deeper understanding of this subject. But as we go through, uh, these two publications, APC publications, and touch upon the different aspects. We will understand God's rule and reign, and also we will we will cover uh, so topics on how we can live, right? how we can live uh, in relation to the world, in relation to uh, the body of Christ, so on and so forth. So that's a, a small introduction for this uh, this uh, course the kingdom of God. Okay, so today uh, the intention is to cover the first three chapters in uh, our publication, Kingdom of God. Um, we'll see how that goes. Um, we will cover maximum in the first hour. And then of course we have a 10 minute break, we will come back and then we will cover uh, some more content. But if you do have questions that you feel you know will, will clarify um, <clears throat> things for other students as well. You can always pop the question in between. So that, that should be fine. However, if you can hold on, you can wait uh, for later uh, for your question to be answered, then I, I would encourage you to, to wait till the end. And then the last 10 minutes, we can have some uh, Q&A. So the first chapter here, uh, it says that the kingdom of God, that it is a kingdom which is planned. Okay. Now, the kingdom of God, I already mentioned, it is in the Bible. And in fact, in the New Testament, 150 times you will see this term used, kingdom of God. And it is one of the major themes of the Bible. Uh, and uh, the kingdom, as we understood, has to do with the dominion of God, or we might want to use the term rule and reign. So the very term kingdom, if you look at it in the Greek, it is Basila, and it means royalty, okay? it means rule, it means reign, it means a realm of the kingdom. So, you know, that same understanding of uh, the uh, 
you know, the, the king or the queen uh, leading their subjects. Uh, so rule and reign, that's what the, the term kingdom uh, is associated with. So uh, as we study this, this uh, uh, theme of the kingdom of God, uh, you would also find terms in the New Testament uh, such as kingdom of heaven, okay, but with the term kingdom in it. Now, we already understood that kingdom has to do with rule and reign. Now, kingdom of God, it, that is self-explanatory. It is ruled by God and thereby we call this kingdom as the kingdom of God. Uh, and kingdom of heaven, it's the same kingdom, right? Uh, but this originates, the rule and reign of God, you could say that it, uh, or we, we get our understanding of the kingdom of God from the kingdom of heaven. In, in many cases. So uh, it's the same term, it's the same phrase, but kingdom of God, like God and heaven is used interchangeably uh, in, in our uh, you know different versions of the Bible. So don't get confused. It's one and the same thing, the kingdom of God. Now, uh, the question we're trying to answer is that, you know, God has always been a king. It's not that, you know, one fine day he decided, okay, I'm already, I have, uh, uh, you know, uh, quite a few hats or hats right now. Let me take on another one. Okay, let me, let me try and be a king. No, uh, he is already a king and this kingdom that he rules and reigns over, this has existed by design. Okay, it has already existed and this is a kingdom which was planned in the mind of God. So we see that you know our God is a God of design. He's a God of plan. Uh, Matthew chapter 25 and verse 34. This is in our notes here. Uh, could somebody read it please since you have the notes as well. Uh, I am on page I can read number it. 3. Yes, yes, hope. please do. Okay. Matthew 25, 34. Then the king will say to those on his right hand, Come, you blessed of my father, inherit the kingdom prepared for you from the foundation of the world. Amen. Okay, thank you. Hope. So the point that we want to make here, it says that the kingdom prepared for you from the foundation of the world. And this term again, you know, foundation of the world it is used at least 10 times in scripture. Uh, and this is just to show us that God had certain things in place. So the kingdom of God, it's not an afterthought. You know, God did not come up with it and decide, okay, it's time for me to rule, so let me have a kingdom. No, but in the nature of God, in who he is, you know, he is already a king. And his kingdom has existed from the foundation of the world. Or in other words, uh, from ages past, that's another way to describe it. Right? Uh, from ages past, like our minds can't wrap around eternity and understand it. But, you know, if we, we can grasp it in some way, we would say that, you know, the way we say, okay, God is um, uh, eternal. God is eternal. He has existed. He has existed. And, and at, you know, some point, this kingdom of God came into existence. And it's, it did not begin when this world was created or the earth was created. But from the foundation of the world, scripture says that the kingdom of God existed. And we also see other descriptions about the kingdom of God. Uh, we are told that this is a kingdom which is prepared for you. Now that is so special. Uh, as we study this theme, you know, somewhere we might get lost and we might think, hey, yeah, God is a king and he's a ruler and everything. But how does this relate to me? But scripture is very clear and it says that this is a kingdom which was prepared for us. You know, we've, we've already uh, looked at that same scripture. It says prepared for you, prepared for you from the foundation of the world. So this is a kingdom which has been prepared for us. And the other aspect of the kingdom is that we are called to inherit the kingdom, okay? inherit the kingdom. And whenever we, we understand the term inherit, you know, for many of us, we might think that, okay, later when the person uh, who's living is gone, then we inherit 
whatever has been written uh, you know for us and all uh, but here the term inherit should be understood as you know joint heirs where we are working together with god uh, and we are receiving of the kingdom right now we are walking in the the power of the kingdom right now okay so we are heirs of this kingdom so this is the beginning We're just trying to lay a foundation here so this kingdom has uh, come into existence from the foundation of the world it is a kingdom which is made for you and me okay we have a very special part in this kingdom and we also have a great authority in the kingdom okay. god has called us to be sons and daughters and we look at that a little later but authority uh, kingdom authority is with the king but we as his children as believers you know, we also have authority and so we can receive of the the power and the goodness of the kingdom uh, every day of our lives and that's a powerful truth we can walk in those kingdom realities right here on the earth so i'll just quickly uh, have a look at the chat here uh, if there are any questions as of now okay rupa thank you she says god is our king we are his subjects to come uh, under his authority in all areas of uh our lives i am his ambassador in the world yeah that's that's right uh, so we uh, are his children we come under his authority uh, we are also his uh, you use the word ambassador representatives in a simpler way i would say yeah we are his representatives we go in the name of the king and uh, that's you know very very powerful as we live our lives you know, we we uh, can walk with this knowledge okay uh now when did this this kingdom get introduced in the in the word of god you know where do we see the early signs of this kingdom right um uh, early signs in the sense again it was created at the foundation of the world but in scripture you see the kingdom introduced when the earth was created okay and uh, we have seen this when we studied prayer and intercession uh, last year genesis chapter 1 was is uh, 27 28 so when god created man and you know he created uh, uh, a man in his own image uh, he gave them authority and we've seen that term right he he gave them dominion dominion was 28 says dominion over the fish of the sea over the birds of the air and over every living thing that moves on the earth so dominion we've already talked about the kingdom rule kingdom reign dominion associated with authority and power okay so the introduction of the kingdom is in the book of genesis we see when god created man uh he created man and of course you know woman as kingdom beings with kingdom authority with kingdom authority but we know what transpired god gave man free will uh, and uh, 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 you know man was deceived by satan the coming uh, deception of satan and we read about the fall of man so while god intended for man to rule and reign you know man fell due to sin and the world got corrupted because of sin uh, and you know the the kind of dominion that god wanted man to have uh, that that did not um, uh, like you you didn't see man live that out uh, until a time when god himself decided to send his son to redeem us right so there was the giving of dominion during creation uh the fall because of which we lost that dominion and authority however you know the plan of redemption which god had through that god brought us he bought us back and he sent the lord jesus christ to reestablish you know in, in a way the kingdom has already existed but kind of reintroduce the kingdom of god and the authority of that kingdom once again okay and uh, this is through the plan of redemption and uh, uh we now are the heirs uh, or you know we we are recipients 
of the good things of the kingdom of God. So through the sacrifice of the Lord Jesus, the kingdom has been reintroduced, re-established. So at this point, I just want to pause a little bit and uh, check with all of you if you're doing okay, uh, if there are any, any questions at this point or you're comfortable, we'll, we'll move further. Okay. Yes, thank you. Me. All right. Looks like, yeah, you're all doing fine. Okay, great. So let's build on it little by little. So the kingdom has already uh, existed. The kingdom in scripture we saw uh, early on in the book of Genesis. And the reintroduction of uh, the, the you know kingdom uh, was because of the plan of redemption through the Lord Jesus Christ. Okay, so now talking a little more about the reintroduction of the kingdom. We find in the Gospels that the first person who came about preaching the kingdom of God was who? Who was it? John, John the Baptist. Oh, okay, okay. Full marks to I think three or four of you. So John the Baptist, you're right. So the first person who came uh, preaching the kingdom and his message was repent, right? His message was repent for the kingdom of heaven is at hand. Okay. But the interesting thing about this kingdom we'll see later uh, that, you know, John the Baptist himself technically was not born again. Okay. And uh, we know that you know, for, for us to be a part of the kingdom after the redemption that Christ brought about, uh, we must be born again. So John the Baptist was not really born again because he uh, he walked the earth before the Lord Jesus Christ, uh, but he was the first one who preached this message of the kingdom of God. And he called people to repentance because the kingdom was close. Okay, And uh, Jesus who, who came after John the Baptist, you know, he also began to preach this message of the kingdom of God. So Matthew chapter 4 and verse 23, uh, that, that would be a good scripture for us to look at at this point. So if someone can please read that page number 5 on top, uh, the upper part of that page. From the, the time yes. uh, Jesus began to preach and uh, to say, repent for uh, the kim kingdom of uh, heaven is at hand. Thank you. Thank you, Dinesh, for reading that uh, scripture. Uh, so you see here that John the Baptist began talking about the kingdom and then Lord Jesus himself, okay, preaching the gospel of the kingdom. Now, you see, the Lord Jesus, when you think about him, you know, hope floods our uh, hearts because the world was corrupted with sin, but hope came through the Lord Jesus Christ. He paid for our sins. You know, salvation came through him. We have now been redeemed. And here is the Lord Jesus, even before he went to the cross, what is he preaching? He's preaching the gospel. What is the gospel? Good news. Right? So the message of the kingdom, why should we be excited about it? Because it is good news. Right? It is great news for us. The good news of the gospel, the, uh, sorry, the good news of the kingdom, preaching the gospel of the kingdom. And notice here, not just preaching, but you see the Lord Jesus demonstrating the model of ministry for us. We see him healing, right? So he's preaching the kingdom uh, and he's also demonstrating the kingdom. So he's healing all kinds of sicknesses, all kinds of diseases among the people. And in this manner, the Lord Jesus began to talk about the kingdom of God and also to live out this, this uh, kingdom lifestyle and demonstrate kingdom power uh, before you know, the, the disciples before the people of his times who were following him. So in a way, you could say that, you know, uh, you find Jesus saying the kingdom is here. You remember we, we talked about uh, uh, the deliverance that took place in Matthew chapter 12. Uh, I think it's verse 28, 
when uh, the Lord Jesus delivers somebody who's demon possessed, then he makes this statement and he says that the kingdom of God, you know, you're, the kingdom of God has come upon you. So there, there is some understanding within that. Okay, the power of the kingdom, the power of the kingdom is being released. Though he didn't mention, you know, what what aspect of the kingdom he's talking about. The demonstration of the kingdom was very much a part of his ministry. So he preached it and he also showed it. He lived it out. Okay, And that is the manner in which he introduced the kingdom of God. And I told you earlier that you, know, you would find the term kingdom of heaven uh, used interchangeably. So the rule of heaven, the rule and reign of heaven was being demonstrated in the lives of people. And when the Lord Jesus preached this message, right, it's a good message. It's a great message. Because now you know, we have we we have um, forgiveness from sin. You know, we can gain back our dominion and our authority and we can go against the works of darkness. Right? We can we can rule and reign over the powers of darkness. And so much uh, was being shown through the very life of the Lord Jesus as he preached this kingdom and as he also demonstrated this kingdom. So uh, that is sort of the reintroduction of the kingdom of God that we observe uh, in the New Testament. Now talking about the kingdom of God, um, we said this is about uh, this is about uh, a king and his rulership over his people. But for the believer, for the believer, yes, in the natural realm, you know, we 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 wonder whether, hey, uh, is this about every believer becoming a part of a physical kingdom? Because some some uh, people have interpreted it in that way, and you know, there's all kinds of teaching around that. That okay. You, know, you have to be only part of this this uh, community because this is the kingdom of God physically here on the earth and all of that. But what does the Bible really say? See, there are two dimensions. There are two dimensions. The first dimension is the spiritual dimension, and which is what I was talking about uh, uh, while talking about the ministry of Jesus, where he preached about the kingdom of God, but he also demonstrated the kingdom. Right? So this demonstration of the kingdom of heaven is happening the way he taught us in uh, Matthew chapter 6 and verse 10. Thy kingdom come on earth as it is in heaven. So we won't go over that you know, all over again. But just think about the rule and reign of God in heaven. In heaven, you know, that, that is... Um, we, we could say like the perfect rule and reign of God because there is no there is no interference of sin in heaven. There's no corruption of sin in heaven. Okay, and uh, uh, in heaven, you know, we we would say that there is perfect joy because God's presence is there. There is no sickness. There is there is no oppression. You know, there is no work of the enemy. There is the worship of God, where you know God is at the center of everything, and He is exalted. So uh, it's a perfect picture that we have up in heaven. And when we talk about the release of that spiritual kingdom dimension the spiritual dimension of the kingdom that we can experience here on earth but that's what we are talking about we're saying we can walk in that kind of dominion of god uh, narupa uh, put that on the chat and said the rule and reign of god in every aspect of my life so whether it is my emotional health whether it is my uh, physical health right uh, whether it is my family whether it is my finances whether uh, you know it is my work uh, my job whatever it is i can expect the rule and reign of god the spiritual dimension to be demonstrated and i can say god you know i want to see a release of that power of god you know we we uh, see in, in scripture righteousness peace and joy that's the kingdom of god Right? So I would say, that God, you know, let there be a release of that righteousness. Let there be a release of that joy. Let there be a release of that peace. And I can walk in that on the earth. Why? Because I am a part of that kingdom. The kingdom was prepared, to, to prepared uh, you know, for the foundation of the world. For whom? For you. For me. 
for us to inherit it for us to be co-heirs and to experience that kingdom so the spiritual dimension of the kingdom is what you and i are walking in and you know we must desire to see a greater demonstration of that spiritual uh, dimension of the kingdom in our lives and in no way it, i mean i i feel personally that uh, the limit right to to experiencing that spiritual dimension is something that we put there is no limit okay? uh, we can keep pressing in we can keep exercising our authority uh, through prayer through the declaration of god's word through decreeing his word uh, and what is happening as we do all that we're establishing the kingdom we're establishing the kingdom and i'm not talking about like a physical kingdom in any way but the spiritual kingdom the spiritual dimension of the kingdom is being established right in every aspect of our lives so uh, we can keep pressing into the spiritual dimension uh, and we can really enjoy it and we can see the spiritual dimension affecting everything around us so the spiritual dimension of the kingdom of god but then there is also the natural dimension okay? now in scripture as we read about uh, you know the the second coming of christ and then you know uh, the the battle that is going to take place uh, we we will uh, as we study about the millennial rule and reign of christ we do learn that all of this means a literal kingdom as well right so a literal or in other words a physical kingdom where the lord jesus is going to uh, rule out of jerusalem okay over his people over the nations he's going to do that uh, and we will see the government the okay? government is another uh, term that we use for for authority for administration um, for rule reign dominion so and the government shall be upon his shoulders okay it already is it already is and we are experiencing it in the spiritual dimension uh, you know to a large large extent but even in the physical realm the way we know a king ruling over his people that is going to happen in the physical realm at you at the return of the lord jesus christ so there are two dimensions the spiritual dimension and the natural dimension now uh, yeah so that's a little more about the kingdom of god and the kingdom of heaven now the question is okay if this kingdom is so amazing and you know it has uh, god as the ruler and the king how can i participate okay, we we saw the kingdom is for me the kingdom is for you and we are here to inherit the kingdom so how do we participate well john chapter 3 verses 3 and 5 uh, the lord jesus gave us the key to entering this kingdom so somebody can read it this is on page number 6 of your uh, uh, notes john chapter 3 verses 3 and 5 please yeah anyone yeah John three uh, verses three dash five. Jesus answers, answered and said to him, "Most assuredly I say to you, unless one is born again, he cannot see the kingdom of God." Jesus answered, "Most assuredly I say to you, unless one is born of water and the Spirit, he cannot enter the kingdom of God." Yes, thank you, Christopher. Uh, yes, so here. the lord jesus has made it plain for us uh that to experience this kingdom right to be heirs of this kingdom uh or to enter this kingdom right we need to be born again so without being born again without you know uh, repenting of our sins without acknowledging the lord jesus christ as that savior the son of god who has died on the cross for us no through whom salvation has come to us without committing our lives to him right uh, we cannot experience this marvelous kingdom of god kingdom of heaven in our lives and uh, which is why we invite people to be born again 
we have to be born again and that is the way in which we can participate in this incredible kingdom of god uh, and experience the fullness of it so to enter the kingdom of god we must be born again there's another passage in the book of colossians where we read that uh, uh, as we put our trust in the lord jesus and as, as we are born again there is a transfer that takes place okay and this transfer it's from one kingdom to another kingdom so while we are talking about the kingdom of god fyi there is also the kingdom of darkness okay and uh, needless to say who the ruler of that kingdom is anyone want to take a guess satan yeah that's right yeah, so satan he is the ruler of the kingdom of darkness right but the kingdom of god which is also known as the kingdom of heaven but in colossians we are told that it's the kingdom of the sun the kingdom of the sun okay uh the kingdom of so we have to move from the kingdom of darkness into the kingdom of his son the lord jesus christ and this is also a kingdom of light right so we have entered in through the redemptive work of the lord jesus christ so for us to experience the kingdom we must be born again if we are not born again we might have a taste of the kingdom like uh, if you look at the lord jesus going and healing people uh in the gospels you wonder and in fact none of them was born again right because he hadn't paid the price for uh the sins of the world but they were healed they were delivered so the people who are not born again can they experience the kingdom very much but it's just you know uh just some of the uh like a, a little taste of the kingdom right the the taste of the power of the kingdom or the goodness of the kingdom sometimes you pray for somebody and i've had this happen to me in church uh, there was once this uh, person from a different faith she had come and she had some difficulty so after the church service i uh, said okay can i pray for you right can i pray for you uh, and uh, she very noticeably she did not want to change her um, she did not want to accept christ so i i didn't want to, i didn't push it at that point but i just said okay can i pray for you and uh, i was praying for her but as soon as i finished praying for her she told me you know uh, i have never experienced the peace that i am feeling right now i don't know how to explain it to you but as you were saying whatever you were saying which is i was praying she felt incredible peace and she said how is that possible you know then i just kind of explained to her yeah see when we pray uh, uh god works god is at work his presence is at work and you're experiencing the presence of god you're experiencing the peace of the kingdom of god so uh can an unbeliever taste of the things of the kingdom yeah but you know it's 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 just a small little uh you know a piece of what uh, the real thing that exists out there Uh, and for us who are believers those who are part of the kingdom those who have entered the kingdom you can only imagine the extent of the the glory and the power you know which which is of the kingdom okay and uh, as i told you earlier there's no limit you can just keep going deeper uh, keep learning more keep uh, receiving more and experiencing more of this kingdom so we have been by being born again we have been shifted from a kingdom of darkness into the kingdom of light the kingdom of the son of god himself and this kingdom right uh, is ours now and uh, we are also called as the sons of the kingdom now in a certain parable matthew chapter 13 was is uh, 36 to 40 i won't read it and i'm sure many of you would be familiar with this uh, parable where jesus talks about you know how uh, uh, there there was uh, there's a field and in that field uh, there were good seeds which were sown and then later the enemy came and he sowed weeds okay uh, but both of them were allowed to grow together at the end when harvest came uh, everything was was cut and then there was a separation 
from you know of the good uh, uh, harvest from the bad harvest or the good whatever is the actual produce of of the field uh, in comparison to the weeds of the field and jesus also goes on to explain and he says that the good seeds which have been sown are the sons of the kingdom the sons of the kingdom and you notice that there's a reference to the sons the tares or the weeds they are also called as the sons of this world so and he explains and he says that the sons of the kingdom are the good seeds are uh, you all who believe you know the sons of the kingdom so the believers we are the sons of the kingdom so we are heirs and joint heirs we are not called as subjects of the kingdom but sons and whenever we look at this term son the authority that it carries should come to our minds right because you know in our, even in our simple everyday lives um, if, if uh, there, there is a there is a father and he has a son the son would be given privileges you know access into the rooms as compared to someone else who has come as a helper and who's just going to be there for a while and take care of things you don't you don't give the house keys you don't give the cupboard keys and you know you don't give uh, all your precious uh, access to your precious things in the house because that individual is not a son but a son will have access so while we're talking about the kingdom while we're talking about the spiritual dimension of the kingdom let us also understand that we are part of the kingdom and we are part of the kingdom as sons okay which in itself tells us that we have incredible authority and we can exercise this authority so we must remember that uh, you know we are part of this kingdom and in our everyday life we we rec we recognize this and we live out of this understanding so kingdom living kingdom living and kingdom life uh, and we will see later on you know what what does that entail uh, what kind of choices should we make uh, and you know what kind of lifestyle should we have all of that uh, but in in closing uh, you know of, of this introduction uh, i want to say that whatever we have learned you know helps us understand about this kingdom and our position in that kingdom and therefore it impacts us and therefore it uh, it pushes us to live our lives a certain way as a uh, kingdom people okay so at that point i think i'm just going to uh, stop here pause and if you all have any questions uh, please go ahead you know you can ask your questions and uh, yeah we will just try and answer some of your questions right now or, or they can just be comments as well just have a thought you could go ahead and uh, share that yeah yeah hello ma'am uh, hello pastor yes yes abraham please go ahead yes i i i had a man of god um saying something about the kingdom of god and the kingdom of heaven i just want to uh -huh. verify Mm. that is true he he said that the kingdom of god is where god's uh, god reigns in other words the whole world um belongs to god mm. but the kingdom of heaven is the place where god's will find finds expression in other words when we talk about the church that is mm. where god's or jesus is seen as the king so mm. the kingdom of heaven has to do with where jesus I mean, where mm. people have accepted Jesus and Jesus mm. has dominion over mm. the people. But the kingdom of heaven has to do with the whole world because God has authority over the whole world. So I want to know if that is okay or what is the main difference, if there is. Okay, so uh, everyone, uh, thank you for that question. Um, I mean, I do see where that understanding is coming from and which should be, which should be okay because uh, whatever we have discussed this morning, um it has all those components however when we see these terms used in the gospels and i already told you 150 times it's repeated it's used interchangeably without a pattern as such okay so that is why i began by saying that it's it's one and the same thing 
um, but the title reveals the kingdom of God shows us that God is the ruler and kingdom of heaven uh, only tells us that the the origin of this kingdom is from heaven that's all okay, yeah? uh, does that so make sense yes please yes okay yeah thank you thank you All right, so uh, I believe that uh, you know, you're just soaking everything in. And uh, as we go along, there will be more questions um, and uh, comments. So that is fine. Uh, so what we will do right now is we will take a short break and we will return. Right, we will uh, come back and uh, uh, continue on with the class. So uh, please feel free, you can go ahead and take a break right now. Uh, we'll be back soon. Thank you. You don't have to log off actually. 